Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Hello everybody. We're here again and I'm going to be talking about a TV show I loved as a child and all through adulthood. Starsky and Hutch. So the show ran from 1975 to 1979. It started as a movie pilot and had 92 episodes, around 50 minutes each. I have such a fondness for this show. I grew up imagining I was Starsky. I had the sweater. You'll notice it from the, if you're familiar with the show, it's in the uh, opening scenes. And I had toy guns. It was Starsky and Hutch, my friends. And that brings up a point um, about the show, about how their friendship really shined. And taking it from a point of view of looking at it now, it's a show that made me think that all my childhood shows were really good and great. So it snuck in the concept of watching things like Chips again. It's fucking horrible. Don't even bother. I was a kid. Anyway, I was young. Starsky and Hutch, till to this day, I could throw on the DVD at any time, any season. But the show's a cop drama, buddy cop type show. And if you read like Wikipedia and some of the um, literature on the show, it tended to be more violent in the first two seasons. And then they lightened it up a little bit. That's evident in the theme music, which I love. The first one and the second one. But the first one was a little darker. Uh, There is a noticeable shift, I think. And one of the things I read when I was going to do this was part of the Wikipedia article describes something that I think resonated with me very well. Because I was thinking this before I did the podcast, before I went to look to make sure I know what, you know, when it aired and and such. But one of the themes about them being a buddy cop was really important to me as a kid. I felt it then and I can see it now because I watch it all the time. I always uh, looking for an opportunity to throw on a DVD, uh, watch a whole season in this time and age with this lockdown, it's something I think I'm going to enjoy even more. I like going online and getting things and watching them, but right now we're in a position where new show, new stuff isn't being made so much. So I'm going to get um, some of my old stuff out, my DVDs and go through them. Starsky and Hutch is never uh, a disappointment. Not, For me, not one episode, but I could see people looking back at it or trying to get into it now. It is placed in a certain time. Uh, The car, which is its own character, we can get into that. Um, But I'm trying to find here where it resonates with me, where it says how at the time the buddy cops weren't really showing that much emotion and... um, uh, affection for each other as two cops and it was really apparent i remember uh there are episodes where you know they're going on dates with people and they have girlfriends and they introduce them they're part of the storylines major ways but the times that they have to rely on each other and they show each other emotion and it it resonates with me so much it brings me back to being a kid and i talk about being a fan of the old batman and robin Uh, show with Adam West and how much I loved it. And my brother was so much taller than me when I was a kid. I think he was like six foot by the time he was 12. And I looked like a midget. But when that show would end its opening scene, Robin would be on his right side and he'd look up. And I would adapt that mannerism because I love comic books and I was always Robin. By the way, Robin Underoos back in the day were the fucking best. Because they match exactly what the fucking guy wore anyway. And the same thing with Starsky and Hutch. Uh, I looked to form bonds with friends in uh, in a way that were 
different growing up. And although it is the kid in me jumping around my room with my own imagination with toy guns and acting out scenarios, it was it was a it was a big influence to me. So you have the two actors, the buddy cop connection, it gets more lighthearted, I guess, during the second two seasons. The car, which is a Ford Gran Torino. I loved it. Now, my favorite car ever is probably the 68 to 69 Hemi Charger. I, I guess that would label me as a muscle car freak, although I like other things. But that's my car, you know, from childhood. I think that's, I don't know what year it generally was. Generally, it might, might have been a 69 or they might have used stung cars. But anyway, it's in all the magazines that year, like the 68, 69 Charger. And this car even from matchbox cars to color forms and anything lunch boxes i had this car bright red or they called it the striped tomato in the show the hutch would call it but it's bright red with this white stripe on it it's awesome it's like jacked up in the back he's always talking about it in the show because i think it's starsky's uh car and it's becomes its own character it, it is referenced and made fun of, and it's such a contrast to Hutch's car, which is like a beat up. Um, I don't know. It was a a Ford Galaxy, a 1970 Ford Galaxy. It was all beat up, and it was like green, I think. Yeah, it's just horrible, and it's always broken down in ep- certain episodes. Starts she's trying to get him a car. Anyway, the theme of the show, the plot lines. Yeah, I could see them being a little uh, isolated in time. But the overall theme of the show still resonates with me. I think it's a hallmark in TV making. It was very popular, um, even in BBC, around the world. It, it got so much attention in reruns. The show had so many stars on it, introduced so many... I think my first... Introduction to Christy McNichol was on this show, and I think she became famous with Eight Is Enough. But oh, what a joy it is to go back and watch these. They're sometimes hard driven, sometimes a little comedy thrown in. You got great side characters like Huggy Bear and uh, Captain Dolby. And you, you introduce some things here and there, and you got the references to the times that were going on. Some episodes were about real life. Uh, one was a Dolly Parton stalker. They adapted that story. They tried new things here and there. And all through it, though, their friendship, their commitment, it was just, it's really refreshing to see. And I don't think you saw it before that. Uh, I think at the time it was something different than what was normally portrayed in those days. Uh, a cop show that I'm familiar with, that I grew up with, that I like, but doesn't hold up for me when I go back is Beretta. Um, I think there's a connection to police woman from Beretta, but I'm not sure. I love those shows, but I don't hold them in rev- reverence. Uh, you know, when I, when I f- think fondly on them now, I don't think anything negative about them, but in that vein, and we're talking like, you know, SWAT, there's a bunch of shows back then, but this show had everything. It seemed to have, um, the buddy cop dialogue, great writing. It didn't feel repetitive in the theme of being cops. It's so much different from a procedural type episode, where you, which is everywhere now. It had a heart and soul. It had a uh, you know a presence that was felt from every episode. Even if the actors and the um, behind the scenes were being assholes or they're being you know, prima donnas or whatever, you know, it didn't show on film. And I'm, I'm surprised sometimes when I hear about certain actors being dicks and, you know, you find evidence or you look at things and they're quite arrogant, nasty people. And I generally think, you know, we all have bad days and giving people the benefit of the doubt. But when you could show it on camera, when so sometimes it's easy to see, see people when they mail it in. And I, I think whatever was going on behind the scenes, it didn't show on the camera. And that's important. 
So you got the great companionship, the buddy cop. You've got some serious topics, a little bit of lightheartedness. There's a shift in the third and fourth season to more buddy cop uh, uh, relationship type things. And I think there's a, I guess you can look and find a, a consensus of critics and stuff that show that this was a conscious decision by the makers of the show and actors maybe, uh, too much violence and whatever. But it seems that the show still held its ratings and still held its um, its ratings in the, its stance in the ratings. It was doing pretty good and to some extent, as well as one could be when you're up against, you know, Mary Tyler Moore show or, you know, all the shows that might have been up to it at that time. I think when you try to look back and you read a little about it, you see that it probably ended because of um, the actors and the writers. Like, it's one of those shows that you maybe could have gone longer. So, I think, you know, it might have been, you know, a time where you got you get lightning in a bottle, it happened, actors change, and writers, and different things change, and it just they seem to know that it wouldn't have been successful because there was always rumors about one of the actors wanting to quit, didn't like things that were going on. And they even tried to start to prepare for that. But in my opinion, you got four solid seasons. It doesn't feel mailed in from beginning to end. I love this show. It's got everything I look for. And even what my bias for being a kid Looking back at it, I think it holds up. I think you could enjoy the show, find the special moments in it, and you, you'll you find uh, at least where the heart and soul was and how well they did it. So it's that time, I guess. Um, we have lots of isolation and downtime. Watch Starsky and Hutch. Give the pilot, maybe go back and watch the old stuff. I will make a reference for the movie. Because a part of me was angry that there was spoofing one of my favorite shows ever. But I say things like, you know, if you do it well, I'm okay. So I enjoyed the movie. I thought it did enough to, you know, just smile and laugh at the part. It was funny for me. And anyway, so the movie, notwithstanding, it had a video game, by the way. I played it with my friend Rob, and it was like a two-player. One person had to drive, and the other person had to aim the gun out the window. It was pretty cool. Um, seeing them show up in the movie at the end, because what's-his-name fucks his car up, and the original Starsky and Hutch show up it was a treat. Watch Starsky and Hutch. I love the show. For me, it still holds up. Everybody, stay healthy out there.